This conference will now be recorded. Overriding and uh, abstract classes. What else we have discussed in last session? I think we are almost at the end of our Python. We don't have many sessions left for this because we have covered almost all. Uh, So if you look at this, we have finished on this in last class. I don't think we need to. <clears throat> This is discussed. We have finished that. Next one, setters and getters. One quick uh, miscellaneous topic what we have here. Because the OOP part, object-oriented programming, most of our OOP is covered, object class encapsulation. Abstraction talks, this abstract classes talks about abstraction. What we understand in abstraction is a, a method without body, that is abstract method. And that is abstraction because you don't expose the functionality, but you expose just method signatures. And that is abstraction. Provide what is essential and hide the background details. That's what we call abstractions or abstractions. Providing essential features, hiding background details. And we do that with abstract methods by declaring them in the abstract classes. Of course, we don't have any keyword like in Java, Scala, or C sharp or C++, we don't have any abstract keyword here to declare abstract keyword, abstract classes. Okay, so if we just declare abstract method in that class, it becomes abstract class. We, we consider it as an abstract, that's all. Okay, so that's the idea about that part. And then coming to this address and getters, this is a miscellaneous, whatever we are discussing, we are going to discuss, most of these are miscellaneous topics. So we covered complete functional programming of python and uh, object oriented programming of python both were covered here so far and now a miscellaneous topic setters and getters usually this is a standard practice when you are going for uh, an object oriented program so in a, in a class you declare this setters and getters setter is used to set data getter is used to get data course, you know how to define methods or functions. The concept is just only just to understand like how we, we make that. But the point is a uh, setter and getter is not new for you. Means, means the point is you know how to define functions, declare functions. If you know that, then setter and getter is not a big thing for us. Okay. Setter means it's adjusted any other normal function. Are exclusively used to set data of one and one. If we have 10 instance variables, we use 10 setters and we use 10 getters. For each instance variable, we use one setter and one getter. To initialize instance variable, we use one, get, one setter. To get that value, we use one getter. Like that, if you have 10 instance variables, then we declare 10 setters and 10 getters. Got it right. So that every setter gives you an opportunity to initialize each instance variable separately. Got it right. Suppose you take constructor. In a constructor, you initialize all instance variables in one go, in single go, in one shot. <laughs> okay. But in setter, it's not like that. For initializing each instance variable, we declare one set. To return value of each instance variable, we use one getter. That's how we, we make this set of sentences. You got my point? Got it right, sir? So syntax is simple. Just to make sure it is a setter, we have we put a free 
prefix as set here or setter. Okay, set underscore that property that is a standard way of declaring setters here. And as usual, you know, right, the parameters, how to declare parameters on that because we are reaching the end of Python. And these things are very, very basic things for you at this stage. And you know, a setter has parameters. You can see because setter is used to set it. Getter don't have parameters. It, it returns it, it returns just the value. Okay. So getter don't take parameters. Self is common for any instance method. That is different. That is okay. That's fine. Leave, leaving that self. Other parameters. Okay. If you talk about the other parameters, then these parameters are applied only with setters. Okay, getter don't have a parameter. It will just simply return a value. That's what getter does. Okay. Is it clear for all of you? Now you, you take an example here. You see here class employee. So to set employee like employee number, employee name, salary. You can see here. I use one setter to set the value of employee number. You can see here the parameter is e number, and we set it to instance variable e number. And one getter to get that employee. One setter to set this employee name, and one getter to get this employee. And one one setter to set salary, and one getter to get salary. And you know by looking at these methods, by examining methods or observing methods. You can easily understand that each setter is initializing one instance variable. Each getter is returning one 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 instance variable. Okay, what it right? So finally, you can see here how we can use them. Now, when I have three instance variables, depend on my requirement. Suppose I don't want to set salary, then I can exclude salary. Then I can set only employee number and employee name with this setter. I don't need to set sal here. I can exclude it if, if I want. Okay, that's how setters gives you an opportunity to choose which instance variable you want to initialize. Suppose if, if you must initialize all instance variables, call all setters in the, in, inside the class. Call all the setters of a class. Suppose you don't want that. You want to initialize only a few instance variables, then just only set those values to the object. Similarly, while getting values from the object, you don't want to get all the values from the object. You just want to choose only some specific values, then choose that specific getter to get that value. In that way, setters and getters gives you a broad scope to set data and get data to an object and to get it from the object. What it right? What these methods will do? They set values to object, they inject values to the object, or they extract value from the object. That's what these methods will do. What it right? That's what that's how we can increase the scope of uh, setting and getting values by using the concept of what is that folks? Setter set games. What it right? Uh, so anyhow, you can test this example. So you can test this example how to set and get data by using setters and things. And you know, the similar concept in Java, we call this as a pozo. What do you call it, sir? We call it as a pozo. Plain old Java object, or we call it as a bean. In Java language, we call it as Java beans. Even in Scala, these are called beans. If you go to C sharp, they call C sharp B. So this, this is a kind of design pattern. Okay? So what do you do, sir? No? Please test this uh, example. If, let's uh, quickly test it. Even I will also test myself once by opening the pie chart. Okay, not this one, sorry.
Okay, let us test this here. So this is our program. Hmm. Not this. Let's copy and paste this. Just testing to show you how we can play with this. So if you look at this code, we have three instance variables, three setters to set data and three getters to get that uh, data. Okay, one per uh, for each instance variable, one setter and one set, one getter is declared. That's how we have to declare uh, setters and getters. Now, if you see, once after I create object to set each value, we use one one setter here for employee number, for employee name. I employee salary like that. What is that we are doing? We are using one setter here to set each instance here. Similarly, same, we use getters like that. To get each value from each instance variable, we use one getter. Which one you want to call or which one you don't want to call, it's, it's your call. It's up to you. Okay, just run it. So, You can see here there is a small error. Let me check it. Okay, you got 10 and you got uh, bound method employee get cell. Okay, let me check it out. Okay, you miss parances. That's the issue. Nothing, nothing to worry. Now we get the output property. Hope you can see right. So employee number, name, and cell. Got it. So this is simple idea about uh, using setters and getters in uh, Python. Even the similar concept is there in other languages as well, including C++. So why don't you test this program? So please test it. Take two minutes and test this program.
Okay, sir. Next, let's move to the next topic. Even the same setters, we can also use some built-in uh, annotations kind of thing. You can see decorators. Can you see these are the decorators? Can you see it, sir? This is the decorator. Okay. To set data, to get data, we can apply at the rate proper. Okay. So this is the decorator used to apply with the getter. And this is the decorator used to apply with setter. Got it right, sir? Suppose you can see here. You can see here examples here. You can see, sir. I am taking one setter, a dot setter here, at the rate a dot setter. Means what? We are trying to set a value here and that uh, variable is a and what we are doing here we are setting this sorry parameter is a and that parameter is set to x here and we are clearly saying that this is a setter here even we can also apply decorators and we create setters like this can you see here sir and get it you can see now this time you can observe one, one uh, similarity here your setter name and getter name both are same but how do I know which is setter, which is getter? That is where this decorators is going to help us. When you say at the rate a dot setter, that means what? Means whatever the name of your uh, this one is there. What is that? This setter name that you are trying to use here. Attribute you can see here, sir. Attribute dot setter. Okay. Whatever the attribute, otherwise you can you can also prospect after that just only i'm giving you a, a quick walk through to get some quick idea okay if you see here whatever name of the this one is there this uh, setter method that you are trying to take it as an attribute and you are making it as a set okay and you are doing that even here the getter is also having same name but the difference is when you put this decorator on top of that, it will tax as a getter. Also, other differences between these two is if it is a setter, you just simply initialize here. If it is a getter, you just apply a return here. That is clear difference. And your interpreter will clearly understand when you apply these decorators. If it is seeing setter on top of this, this, this method, this decorator is there then your interpreter thinks this as a setter. Suppose, if your interpreter is seeing this decorator on top of this method, it, uh, it definitely interprets this as a getter. And it will see written here as well. It's there. What it writes in. And finally, there is nothing to do here. Simply, you can see here. And also, one more advantage when you make it as a getter, see here, when you often use this decorators you can see you can use this setters and getters as variables not like methods you can see a created object for this a class and then usually when while calling method what do you do you pass values through this parenthesis right through method call but here when you have when you use this built-in decorators and when you create setters and getters you can use setters as variables. You can use them more as variables, less as methods. Outside the class, this can be used like a variable, not like a method. That is the advantage what, what we have if you are using this uh, built-in decorators to create a setter and to create a getter here. You get my point. So, this is as, as simple as like this, sir. This is like, you know, more or less it is like, uh, like you are making a call like this, how something like OB dot A of 10. Usually we call a setter like this and we call, we pass value like this, right? We pass value like this. But as you are making the setter, setters with decorators, the advantage is uh, the setters and this getter can be used like a variable, more like a variable, less like a method. That is the advantage we have when you go with the decorators. 
and these are built-in decorators. Don't worry about like I did create in the what it writes sir. Okay, so that's idea about this one, sir. And even even while calling getter, when you say that uh, op dot a, it's as equivalent like this, like as this. This is more or less equal to this. Means when you call a getter, you just simply make it a call, then the value is automatically returned. Now, as you are using some built-in decorator, even this getter can be used more or less like a variable rather than a. Can you see this? Sir? Okay. Right. This is a simple idea about uh, the advantage and the differences if we what what we have if we are using built-in setters and getters. Okay, when you are using built-in decorators, otherwise. Setters are and getters are created by us only, but the decorators are given by five. We mix them and we try to make it much more readable here by using this phenomena. Got it right, sir? So this is also another really, it looks really wonderful. See, you see? It is adding some value to the concept here. Instead of no going like this with too much of all that stuff, we can just simplify that with the, this getter sender get us created through through what sir through built-in decorators. That's all, sir. This is a simple example. Let's quickly test this. How do you know that when setter is called, when getter is called? Here at this point, when you initialize a value to the setter, means what you are making a call to the setter. When you just directly make a call without initialization, then you are calling a getter. That is the difference. Got it right, sir? Clear to all of you? Let me run this, sir. You get an obvious. This is another idea about what is that? Uh, how to? rewrite this previous program by using built-in decorators per setter and getter. Okay. Please test this. Bro, did I miss anything? Uh, after abstraction, uh, the setter and getter only, right? <laughs> Giant later. Yeah, you am I probably if you if you might have missed uh, you missed uh, this one, uh, Madhu, the previous concept of this. How to create setter and getter without using this built-in decorator, this one. Okay, okay, okay. I, 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 I attended this. I, I was there. Yeah. No issues then. You didn't miss anything. Okay, okay. Yeah, please uh, test this, uh, folks. Take two minutes. Test it yourself.
Uh, please confirm, sir, once it is tested. Okay, sir, let's continue to the next topic. So we're done with this. Next one, just understanding uh, about private variables in, uh, in Python. By default, everything is public in Python. Okay, like in Java or uh, other traditional languages. We don't have keywords here like for we don't have a specific keywords for public private and product got it right so if you ask me then do you have any private keywords here or do you have any public keywords here or do you have any protected keywords here no we don't have any such keywords to tell the visibility to tell the visibility. Visibility means what? Something like public, something like private or protected, or default in some languages. Okay, then how do you, how Python use this, uh, how Python is going to show, show this visibility to us? How it implements this visibility? Means, uh, for that you have to see here, there's a simple and quick observation. We don't have no, we don't need to worry too much about that. If you use double underscore with any variable or with any method, such variables are such methods, we can consider this as a, a private variables or private methods. 
Default is public set. Yes, the members are public. The variables, the methods, the classes, everything is public. And we don't have interface concept in Python because we don't have that issue of multiple inheritance in Python. Somehow they have handled it in a different way. That's why interface approach is not there here. We have just only a class concept here. And coming to the access modifiers, how they implement is not with the keywords. And how do you do the, how do they do that here? How do Python implement that access modifiers? Means by using this underscore. Okay. You can see here. Double underscore to declare private. That's what for public default, everything is public. If you don't use any underscore, it is public. Okay. And they say protected, but if you just use one underscore, they call it as protected. But um, as per the documentation, we don't have much information about protected. Just, you know, if you use single, inter single underscore, you might assume that as protected. But if you use double underscore, it is treated as private. So with any variable or with any method, if you apply double underscore, such members are treated as private. And that is the basis for encapsulation. If you want to protect data, that's possible by declaring data as private. And how do you declare such data as private a method or variable by using this double underscore? Okay. Usually, we declare variables as private method says public that's the standard approach of implementing the, a class in object oriented program. we don't declare everything as private sir that is no use for us we don't declare everything as public even we have limitation there. the actual standards to follow in object oriented programming is your data has to be private your methods has to be and you can make it protected when you have inheritance. Suppose you are doing inheritance, in such cases you can apply protected, but protected is not that efficient here. I didn't see that uh, too much of uses of protected Python. Okay, but I'm just only giving you an idea, a quick idea. So what is this encapsulation? Now we have seen abstraction with abstract methods and abstract classes. Okay. The only principle that is left behind in our uh, in our, in our uh, list of OOP principles is encapsulation. Because we know object now, we know class now. We know abstraction, we know inheritance, we know polymorphism. The only thing which is not discussed in this whole Python session is encapsulation. If I should talk about encapsulation, <coughs> excuse me, then we should know about private. So what is encapsulation? Encapsulation is nothing but simple. Protecting data. Where you group your data, variables and methods into a single unit. That is what we call encapsulation. And we protect data. That is possible by declaring as private. What it types it. How is it possible? It is possible by declaring it as a private. Okay. But if you declare everything as private, do you think it is useful? Suppose variables, you data you declare as private. That is that is a standard way because we don't expose data outside. But methods you have to declare public self. Otherwise, you cannot use that class at all. Okay, you have crores and crores of money, and you put it in bureau. Okay, you put it in a locker. And you, you didn't this use you didn't give that key to even your family member also. Okay, who is there in your house also? You are not giving it. Then what is the use of that money? Private is that. Okay, you protect data, no doubt. But you have to expose that data, not directly but indirectly through methods. That's why you, you should declare methods public. Got it right, sir? Now if you see here, a small example for you. Now, if you see here in this example, we are just applying this uh, encapsulation here. The same POSO we are using. Like, no, sorry, I cannot say POSO here because this is Python. The same setter and getter concept we are applying here. Okay. Now, if you see here, we are using a private variable here. Private. 
double underscore. Correct, sir. And here in the getter, you can see this method is not uh, methods are public here, but variables are private. I can only get this value only through getter. You can see here I am returning through getter. If you directly access this, let us test it. If we can access this directly or not, let us test it. That gives you a quick type. Other than you know replacing each instance variable in this setter set getters with this private data, we didn't make any much changes to this. Every instance variable is set with what's a underscore to employee number and then name and then salary. Only the instance variables. Means what we, we protect data here by making them private, and this is encapsulation. If everything is private, suppose if methods and variables both are private, then that is tightly encapsulated class. But usually, tightly encapsulated and encapsulated class is doesn't uh, is not useful that much for us. Okay, why? Because nothing can be called outside. So we have to make it as loosely encapsulated. What do you mean by loosely encapsulated? Data will be private, methods will be public. That is loosely encapsulated method. Sorry, encapsulated concept. Are a class, loosely encapsulated class. And we can do all that with the class only. Encapsulation is applied in a class. Got it right, sir. Now you come down here. And you see, you create an object here, sir. And uh, you set data like this, and you get data. You get data like this. Nowhere outside a uh, class, it, 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 it seems like you have a private data. If you look at, at this setters, or if you look at, at these getters, you don't feel anything like that. Actually, inside the class, we are doing encapsulation. We are implementing encapsulation. We are protecting data. We are hiding data inside the class itself. We are not exposing outside. And private data can be accessible only within that class itself. It is not exposed outside even to the other class in the same file also. Or even to the subclasses. If you talk to the text. Even subclasses cannot access this sir, private. That's also this is idea about that. Idea about what, sir? This one. Why don't we test it quickly, sir? Let us take this. You got idea, right? How to declare private data in, in Python? How do you declare that private access modifier in Python with any variable or with any method? If you declare it with under double underscore, two underscores then it becomes a private variable let's test it sir and the scope is the scope of private variables is class itself we can access them only within that class and private members are not directly accessible outside that class sir. it's not possible to access outside the class so let's test it sir other than that the setter and getter concept is clear for all of you right you don't do you have any problem So now you see this, sir. This is private data. This is private data. This is private data. Some are seeing some warning. Okay, it is asking, you know, because I use setters and getters, it is asking to use constructor for that. Usually, we know, right? Where do we initialize instance variables inside a constructor? You can do that as well. If you want, you can you can also follow that. You got this right, sir? So now we know this, sir. All these variables in this class employee are private data. They are protected data. Protected in sense, encapsulated data. What I mean is, I don't say that uh, protected access. Okay. This is private or encapsulated. And we can access such members only within that class itself. It is not visible outside. To test it, let's just quickly test it. First, we'll test it once. Setter will set 
value to each instance variable and getters will return values first let's run this and we get same data right at this level everything seems to be normal you don't uh, even imagine that there is a private data inside when you are doing it outside okay but actually we have a private data inside now what i do is once after we call setters what is that we can call that variables directly outside the class as well okay so how do let me just try to call them you can see here nowhere i am seeing that instance variables here in this intellisense usually when you say object dot or when i say reference dot when i say that by now i should see that variable in the list in the intellisense but i can see only methods but i am not observing the variables suppose you see sir you remove double underscore here for salary now you observe here somewhere you should find that uh, salary sir no issues we'll do one this is get sal na huh? okay i'll do one in set sal make it as a public okay now you, you try here sir can you see sal now sal is visible because sal is declared in, in that uh, setter not in getter wherever we declare if you make it public then it is visible on say you got this right sir means double underscore is nothing but it is a way to declare private members in in is that clear for everyone sir so this is proved what is that how to declare private data in in python so you can try that if you whenever you want usually all this is applicable when you go for some web application development or when you go for any you know when you are building some objects for any algorithms only in such cases we make data like this sir. we follow this kind of uh, encapsulation abstraction all these things suppose if we are using pure functional programming we don't have all this there we don't have this public private protected all that stuff okay only it comes with this object oriented program is that clear for everyone sir clear sir is everyone clear so why don't you test this program sir so run it once there is some error okay no issues the issue is with getter here no issues i am applying again underscore underscore okay. okay quickly run it and don't get confused sir whenever we use the under a uh, double underscore at left and right sides sir, means sir, means what there are some some special variables or some special methods declared in python okay they are not private that, that is not private data sir don't think that is private if you put one more underscore at right side again it becomes what some some kind of uh, built in kind of uh, methods there even if you want you can also create like that we don't have an issue but they are not private what it right sir so anyhow you can test it once this program because now you know clearly what is that uh, difference between public data and private data so far whatever we have used is public sir what it right sir whatever we have used is public right now once you prefix it with double underscore then the member variable or method it becomes private can you test it sir
Okay, folks. So this is the idea about uh, this one. As I had discussed, you know, uh, access modifiers or access specifiers. So that uh, we understood, we can use public, private, protected in Python as well. But only thing is, uh, we don't have any keywords for that. The point is, uh, we use by default it is public. Every member is public without any uh, underscore as a prefix. Okay. Usually we declare private members with double underscore like this as a prefix for any variable or a method. And protected members are declared with the single underscore. Okay. And we know usually public means accessible anywhere. Protect this uh, private means they are accessible only within that class. Protected members usually where do we use them is a uh, there if you declare a member as protected means what such members are inherited only to subclasses not to any other classes such members are called protected members like how our parents protect uh, properties and give it to only their, their children not to anybody else that's what protect is private means suppose something is purely private to your parent then even that he, he doesn't even give that to a kid also Got it right if it is public everybody can access it like a trust kind of hope this is clear for okay so this is an example already we have seen some example and even this is a very quick example just to quickly try this you can see here double underscore is a, a private and then a single underscore is protected and this is public Okay, but these are class variables. These are declared in class scope, not in uh, method scope. Maybe you, you can test it with method as well. If you want, you can test it in a method. Okay, so might be we can just quickly test all these three in one one program. We don't need to again take too many examples. You can just take it as class sub A. Something like you know, just take one method D of M1, then uh, what shall we do? Self dot now we know about private. This is uh, self dot sum x equal to one. What kind of member is this? This is a public member, okay? Now self dot underscore x. This is for underscore sorry uh, y equal to some property if you use just once one underscore as prefix it becomes protect and then self dot underscore underscore z equal to that now if you look at this this all these three different variables which talks about three different scopes okay public is visible directly outside the class because it is public and protected is visible within the same class and to the subclasses you know we have finished inheritance and private is visible only within that class not even to the other classes in the same file not even to the subclass okay now we take one quick example uh, let's first test it create an object a equal to a. Uh, now call this method a dot one because without calling that method, uh, point is uh, it's difficult for us uh, to invoke them because these values are not created in to the in the object. We know right. Only when you call this method, these values are added to the object. Otherwise, we have just an empty object in Python. It is mo much more uh, organized. Uh, we have much more organized memory management in Python compared to two other languages. So now you can just quickly test it. Print out a dot. When I say a dot, you can see here. I am able to see only two members here. One is m1, the other one is x. Maybe let me scroll down if I can find anything else. I don't find anything else. Okay, 
So this is all metadata set. This is coming from its super class object. Again, there is one more important point. Okay, I'll talk after this. But now I can only see one X, but not underscore X even double, uh, sorry, uh, underscore Y or double underscore Z. That protected and uh, private properties are not uh, visible on this reference. Can you see this? Can you see this? You are not able to see that here. You cannot see Y, you cannot see Z. You can only see X means what? Protected member is visible only within that class and only to subclasses, not outside directly. And private is much more restricted. This proves a point here. Now just run it now quickly. A dot M1 missing one required positional parameter. Okay. So I'm missing Terrence's. Now it should be fine. Now you got it. So let's test a protected variable. Anyhow, public can be visible within the same class set. Or otherwise we can get this value through through this method. Okay. Maybe I can just print a like this underscore y then print out underscore z maybe we can also get that values through some other method you can use a getter and you can try to get through getter as well if you want you can try that way okay so now is that uh, clear for all of you sir I'm just printing protected and private variable within the same method itself, wherever I have declared and initialized this instance variables. Okay. We can invoke through methods that indirectly, but we cannot directly invoke these members outside, this protected and private members. Okay. Now write it. Just test it. Underscore Y is not defined. Okay, might be I try to call like this when I print it here. This gets created only when after calling this method. So what should I do? Let me do one thing. We take another method. You know, right in Python, this instance variables are declared and assigned to object only when you call this method. Okay. After calling this method, then only they get declared and initialized. But by that time, I think that's happened, right? You are calling after that only. One minute, let me. Score, oh, oh. Self, self. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I forgot that. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes what happens is, <laughs> Yes, definitely we should use self, right? Completely, I am out of that. Yes. Oh, no need of this, sir. Because when you call method, first this gets created, then only right, we are doing print statements. If you put print, print statements at the beginning itself, then that is, a, that is an issue for us, right? So this has to work. So my, my prop, what is that? I ignore this uh, self here. Okay, anyhow, uh, probably we fix this. Thanks, Madhu. Thanks for the update. Now let's run this. Okay, you got the data, right? Why you got uh, 20, 30, first, and 10, 10 after that? Because you print only Y and Z here. So M1 gets called first and then you are printing X. That's why you got 10 here. Don't think uh, it is changing the order here. Output will come as per the order you, you print it. 
don't do anything of, of by itself okay that's it sir. this is the idea about uh, what is that this one let me quickly test about protected variable because protected member is inherited uh, can be visible or accessed within the same class where we declare and only the subclasses as well let us test that subclass scenario as well so b of a okay now i'm just not i'm not doing anything just declaring a simple method and printing this data get data and simply say self dot now i should see this see this what uh, y and z right underscore y even that is not getting inherited to the subclass okay underscore z okay that's fine that's private variable protected at least has to be inherited to subclass so here can just say print off self you can see x here not out similarly we should see yeah now i think i remember see we don't need to think this as protected sir one more correction small correction to this when you use double even this is also treated as private here small correction this is also treated as private if you use double underscore then this is actually what is that it's more private and if you use a single underscore this is less private that's what uh, the meaning somewhere i have read this let us just quickly anal analyze otherwise if it is protected it has to be visible in the subclass because in all the languages this happens means this is not even treated as protected the concept of protected is not applicable probably it's not applying here so what we do is i read somewhere when you use uh, this you can see here private member well, that is one thing protected member this is not going to do that because we are seeing practically you do one thing give me one minute somewhere i read it double underscore is fine that we know anyhow we have discussed it so i don't think we have this protected uh, properly applied here if they say single underscore but even subclass is not able to invoke it protected They were saying we can invoke protected my attribute even outside the class, but I am not seeing there. Give me one minute. I'll, I'll conclude this.
So as I told you, right, protected doesn't have much impact here in Python. So behavior that definitely has some. Mm. We'll do one thing. We'll check for that. Try and study tonight. Everybody is applying underscore, but I don't think that will. Behaving as expected. This is our thing. See, that's what you know, I, am, I am trying to tell you, right? This is a valid point here. You can see Python has no privacy model. There are no access modifiers. We have discussed that. There are no truly protected or private attributes, but still, of course, we can manage it with the double underscore with our private. Okay. So, Semi, you can see here now double attribute is changing to single attribute here you can see which makes it a, a semantic privacy implied by, by this underscore means what uh, so it's it's something like this the point is uh, conclude this uh, when you use single underscore it's it's we can assume this as a less private or semi private not fully private variable because double underscore it is treated as a fully private variable. So that's how this works. But that's why I'm not able to see in the subclass. Usually it has to be visible, but we are not seeing it. But I'll do one thing. We'll also explore a bit more on this. Uh, and uh, tomorrow I will update more about private way, protected variables, not private. Because private is clear, uh, public is clear. Only thing is we need to get that. Uh, clarity on this but still i told you right even this single underscore we can treat it as a semi private or uh, it's more or less private thing because i have read somewhere still i remember even it's a kind of private but not what do you call uh, uh, fully private variables and you can see here leading underscore just for non-public methods 
and uh, we anyhow i will check on it and uh, get back to you what it writes this is private okay no problem we will we'll talk on it in the tomorrow session oh, uh, apart from that you got clarity right at least to some level the scope anyhow usually protected members are, should be visible in the subclass but we are not seeing that so we can uh, but now we can uh, stop it here we can we can stop this discussion here about pro pro private protected members okay i will i will talk tomorrow and if anything is there we'll explore and update you what are the pros and cons about protect public is clear protected is clear sorry uh, private is clear for us okay. so that's about this all this uh, oop things here encapsulation okay and then uh, the other things like uh, setters and getters and how we can apply them with uh, the other one what we call decorators then access modifiers how they are applied in, uh, in python and uh, the limitations we have seen this anyhow you can ignore this and super keyword is there here also so we'll talk about this today and close this topic here okay so when do we apply this super function here uh, it's very simple sir super function is used to invoke super class variables in subclass if you want to access super class variable in subclass exclusively this is applicable in overriding because you, you can override variables in, uh, in python right sorry we can override methods in python when you override methods your super class method and subclass method seems to be the same if somebody asked me a question sir how can you invoke a super class method in subclass that is the question already subclass has a method with the same signature now you want the super class method to be called suppose you see this example sir what is the super method means this is used to invoke super class variables or methods from a subclass instance variables and instance methods from a super class in a subclass that is the idea about this <coughs> okay fine let's just see this now a quick example we'll finish this today and uh, close this discussion today's session suppose you have a class here you have a method like this here. okay something like this okay salman khan i'm just taking just some for some if you like Hrithik Roshan, I will add that to the subclass. Class B. Okay. B of M1. I just make my method as what is this as some actor. So, same acting I am overriding. Suppose you are not satisfied uh, you are right now with the super class method. We will override it in subclass. So, I put here something like arithmetic fine because just these are Bo bollywood heroes just perfect idea now you know i want to call this super class method in subclass you know right now suppose i create an object for subclass like this now when i say b dot acting by default the method of subclass is called correct we have discussed this when you override method this method resolution or this method mapping uh, method binding happens based on object now object is subclass the subclass method is called here if you run this you get what rithik got it right suppose you ask me a question sir when in this case we have both methods are same in, in superclass and subclass now i want to access the superclass method in subclass what should i do sir okay then you can apply super method you can use it anywhere at the beginning or at the end anywhere so you can say some super dot now which method is called here super dot acting now you are a big fan of both now you don't want rithik you want both rithik and salman together in your own thing then i want i should call this super class method in subclass suppose 
If I directly call acting, usually we can call superclass properties directly in subclass. Now, assuming that I am calling this superclass method, okay, I'm just trying to say here you can see here acting. I'm having an error, no doubt about that. Why error? When I call like this, this is a recursion, infinite recursion. You are calling the method of same class itself. This doesn't seem like you are trying to call superclass method. Now, if you put your cursor here, unresolved reference acting. Okay, of course. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Again, I forgot self. Okay. <laughs> so now this will work. But still, this this is actually there is a flaw in this. We have a flaw here, sir. What is that flaw? This is recursion. When you when you declare like this, this method call is, is not going to call method method of parent, but it is going to call method of itself. And if you try to run this code, it leads to you know overflow stack overflow issue. Recursion error, you can see there. This is a stack overflow problem. Maximum recursion depth, depth exceed y. If you declare here, it is trying to call method of same class itself, this subclass method itself. It is calling it again and again and again and again. How many times you can see the output here? You might see here. This keeps coming, 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 coming. You see the output there. How many times Ruthik is printed there? Can you see that? Did I run my program that many times so far? I didn't do it, right? You got the point? Means what it is calling. This is a recursion. When you put like this, this, this is going to call method of same class itself. So I want to call method of super. Then in, in front of this, what you have to do is simply you have to say super dot one minute. I don't think you need self this time when you are doing this. Because you are calling method of which one, sir? Parent. So I don't think self is necessary, but let me test it, sir. This time, first we get everything. Then we should get Salman because when you say super dot acting, then it is going to call method of super class, not the method of subclass. Now let's let me run it and see what happens. Now here when I call acting, then this method is called. And when this method is called, first Rithik is printed. Again, super method acting is called. Then Salman should be printed from this method. Let's run this one. Yeah, you can see them both. You don't need to self here. Got it right. If you are calling individually, then we need self. On super, I don't think you need that. Can you see that? We can see both Rithik and Salman. Can you see it, sir? So this is the idea about super method. And usually, when, when, when should we use this super, sir? When do we use it? We use it when both the methods of parent and the subclass are same. Okay, suppose you might have a variable like this, one more use case. Self dot. Let me test one more scenario and then we will close this session today. Okay. And here also I will say self dot x equal to something. Now here I am printing this 30 here and here I am printing this 10 here. Okay. Now, let me run this. So, I'm sorry. Ah, you're right. The weekdays usually we do Scala. In Scala, the print separator is plus concatenator. Here we use comma. That's the issue. So, that's what it is giving me left and right. Now, you got it right. Suppose I want to invoke. Uh, now, if I print, uh, oh, I'm printing directly 10. Now. Let me print x, sir. Self dot x. And here also, self dot x. Okay, fine, sir. Now, again, you might ask me a question. When this variable here in both parent and subclasses are same, of course, the values are different, sir. Can you see this? Now you ask me a question, sir, I want parent class variable to be called in subclass. I want to invoke variable of parent in subclass. What should I do? Then, comma, 
then what we can do then again i can take the help of what super dot can you see this now means what super method can be used in two ways it is used to call super class variable or super class method in subclass usually when do we we, we go for using super when the variable or method of super class and subclass are, are having same names then you prefer super method. otherwise you don't need super why because you can use directly those variables in the subclass only this this is necessary when you have similar variable and similar method of uh, super class in subclass as well in such case we use super to invoke super class members in subclass now you run this program super object has no attribute one minute okay okay super object has no it means we should invoke this here. by default it will invoke some class one i'll do one thing first i will call this method here after that i will call the variables okay you know why when i call super method then this should declare and initialize this should get declared and initialize so the one that once that is created probably we might call this let me test it once still i am seeing it salman khan tag is there and is calling salmon tenant let me like let me call it like this Can we apply this on variables? That is the next question. I'll do one thing, sir, just for testing purpose, making this as acting one. Anyhow, you know the concept. Huh? We are calling acting one. Even when you create separate object also it, it will be specific to only to that object it won't be directly called to subclass so in this case i'll do one thing like this there is a way for this that doesn't make any sense here that is not how super has to be applied you can create an object for a and you can call it that means when you create an object again it is a totally different concept okay it's not like that without creating object you can be able to call this like if you see we are able to call acting method right so similar right did i create any object here i didn't create any object it directly invoked it similarly i should be able to call this uh, variable as well so probably otherwise super method is not applicable for uh, variables sir. if it is not giving output means it might it might not be applicable with variables let me run it then one more time is printing 10 right okay and do one more last thing self dot x even this is not turning this to you. 
seems like the super method is not applicable with variables in python cell oh this is completely modifying this x to 10 itself okay so overwriting this and as a self dot x equal to 10 if you see there it's overwriting Print of self dot x. This time we are going to get the probably I'm expecting 10 this time. Yes. Means what? Even here when you call acting, it is overriding this x, which is declared in a subclass. Now when I say super dot x, it's not working. Per dot x is not done. one more last scenario let me comment it now let me call this x now without commenting this acting method let's see what happens it's not working okay Probably the conclusion might be this invoking variable with super method is not applicable in Python. Uh, even I will just explore on this and update. But this is a simple idea about super keyword. Leave about the variable part. It's not supporting. Variable is not supporting. So usually the super method is applicable when we have overriding methods. In other cases, it is not necessary. Sir. It's not necessary. So that's the idea about uh, super keyword, I mean super method. Please test it once, then we'll close the session. Can you please test it? So there is one, two more topics what we need to discuss. Here is a, one is regular expressions and then uh, exception handling and multi-threading. Probably tomorrow we will complete regular expressions. We'll finish regular tomorrow. One more week for us and finally the next week will be the final week for us for five.
Hope, uh, hope you have tested this, folks. For clarity, right, about all this citrus and gators and uh, the decorators, we implement citrus and gators and then <coughs> the super method. And also, we have discussed about uh, one more scenario. What is it? Uh? Yeah, the access modifiers in Python. The public, private, protected, and we have discussed all that. Right? All of you are good now, no, sir. Hope this is clear. Probably tomorrow we'll close the regular expressions. There are a few miscellaneous I need to discuss tomorrow about uh, whether protected is how protected works in Python. The second one is variable overriding. Do you have that in Python or not? We need to conclude this two and uh, finish this. And probably we might finish regular expressions tomorrow. And then uh, I, I, I will take to the introduction level. I don't get go too deeper into the regular expressions. Uh, understanding that basic part is very important. And we, and we will apply those uh, basics of regular expressions on a couple of uh, use cases and we get some clarity on that. Then uh, we will move to the exception handling and then threading. That we probably next week should be the last week for Python because we have almost covered everything. If anything is there, we will do it as a workshop. Like, you know, one day workshop, two day workshop like that, two hours workshop like that, okay? So that's how we, we plan after that, okay? Even we continue with the uh, analytical Python after that, uh, okay? So slowly we'll make it as workshop kind of thing. So that's what uh, works. Any questions? Madhu or uh, Vinod or Usad, any, all of you. Do you have any questions? Others, Deepak? So, Okay, folks, thank you so much. We'll meet again tomorrow, same time. Probably we might close that uh, regular expression. Somewhere.